We are the majority and not backing down. Not today, not ever. We need to make sure that state legislative bodies that are still in session do not go the way of Alabama, do not go the way of Georgia, do not go the way of Ohio. Our job now is to let every state legislator in every state know we're calling on them to ensure no more bans and to protect and expand access to You're recognizing that I was a baby and I was alive in the word to stop the ban. Let me hear it. Thanks. 
Uh oh. but they'll do about 2,300, uh, mainly in the Detroit area. They're trying to restructure and resize their business so they're more competitive. They have a lot of capital needs. Uh, they have to pay for autonomous and electric vehicle research and other mobility, uh, in addition to uh, the millions of dollars that they normally spend updating their, product, their normal products. Uh, all of that puts a big strain on capital dollars, and uh, so they're trying to get the company smaller so they're able to do that. They say they'll save about $600 million a year.
everybody. To try to repeal the Affordable Health Care Act and that ban on pre-existing conditions. And now, in Alabama and Georgia, they try to completely ban the right to abortion. Are we going to let them? No! This is a matter, my friends, of civil rights. This is a matter of people's rights. Allow them to move this country backwards. This is not going to happen. And you know who's with us? The American people are with us. 73% of the public do not want to reverse Roe v. Wade. The vast majority of Americans do not want to put doctors in prison for 99 years. mic up at your lips. Yeah, just put the microphone up at your lips. I'm proud to be a man standing for women's health care. And I'm proud to welcome the men who are here as well as the women. Because women's health care rights are human rights. To the men of America, let me say, your stake in this fight is as big as anyone. Because this fight, this debate, this war on human health care and women's health care imperils all of our rights. Now, I worked in the building behind us for Justice Harry Blackman. Who wrote Roe v. Wade? I worked, I worked for him the year after he did it. And we thought at that time, well, this issue is over. We settled it, right? And here we are again because there are me, man. groups and individuals and states that want to defy the United States Constitution. Are we going to let them do it? No! Are we going to let them do it? No! Well, Judy Chu and I, and her colleagues in the House, and Tammy Baldwin, my colleague in the Senate, this Thursday are going to be introducing a bill that says to the states of America, you cannot restrict women's health care by or any of those other supposed pretexts for restricting women's health care. We won't let you disguise these anti-constitutional efforts as supposing protecting women's health care when you mean to take it away. And to the men of America, let me say, stand up for women's health care and support the women's health care. These measures are not only morally repugnant, they are not only over the cliff, but they are meant to distract us because 
we also have work to do on the gradual erosion, the chipping away, the slow motion overturning of Roe v. Wade. Let's not take our eye off the ball. Any restriction on women's reproductive rights is too much, unconstitutional, morally repugnant, unnecessary, and immoral. So, I'm proud to be here today, and remember, all of the women and men who have laid down their careers, endangered their lives, literally at clinics, where violence sometimes was the tactic, where physical coercion was sometimes used. And these new laws are every bit as evil, every bit as repugnant. We are determined to fight them. Are you? Yeah! Are you? Yeah! I am now proud to introduce a great champion and a wonderful advocate, Representative Judy Chu, my partner. <laughs> Don't you just put the microphone right up, up at her lips, please. Right at Okay. Last week, states like Alabama passed the most draconian laws against abortion. And you know what I say to that? Stand up, fight back. Well, are we going to let 
the bullhorn. We don't need the bullhorn. Don't no the bullhorn. No bullhorn. Don't use it. You don't use no. I'm not. I'm not worried, and I am no. not afraid. Oh, I'll tell you why. I know that women are the most powerful force in the world. Autonomy 
over our bodies and our health. How much longer do we have to wait? When black women coined the term reproductive justice 25 years ago, we were intentional about framing our work to dismantle reproductive oppression. Reproductive oppression looks like forced breeding of enslaved black women. It looks like forced sterilization of women deemed feeble-minded. It looks like coercion and lack of respect when we visit our doctors. And it looks like the backwards abortion bans that we're seeing right now. Our lived experiences, as well as the experiences of those who came before us, guide our fight for freedom. With their roadmap, we will win. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. Put that mic right up to her lips. It is. It's... No. Oh, there we go. Oh. Don't do it. <laughs> right up your lips.
are perfectly willing to really to undo decades long precedent. And of course, Roe v. Wade is one of them. That is why we're standing in front of the Supreme Court. Justice Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, are you listening? Yeah. I just left. From a public school in Hawaii, and I told them I was coming to a rally in front of the Supreme Court, and they said, "Why?" And I said, "It's because we are we have to fight for abortion rights." And they knew all about it. And I asked the girls in that group of eighth graders, "How many of you girls think that government should be telling us women when and if we want to have babies?" Not a single one of them raised their hands. And then.
Representative Presley and Chu, all the representatives who are here today, we have legislation to protect a woman's right to choose. We will pass it, but we will only pass it with your help. Can you do that? Yeah. My friends, this is a key moment in our t history, and we won't go back. Join me. We won't go back. We know what's happened. Those who have planned to repeal Roe and take away a woman's right to choose think they can now win. Can they win? Yeah. Are we going to beat them? Yeah. From Alabama to Missouri to Texas and beyond, Republican legislatures are waging a war to unravel a woman's fundamental rights. They are responsible for 300 newly proposed restrictions. We are here to send these folks a message, not on our watch. Most Americans don't want to see Roe overturned, and they're doing a sneak attack. They say, oh, they don't like the Alabama law, and then they vote for judges who will uphold the Alabama law and repeal Roe. They are the kinds of people, they are, this is the act of hypocrisy. Someone hold this for a second, I want to do something. Here's what they say. With one hand they say, oh no, I don't like the Alabama law. With the other they say, give me judges that are for the Alabama law and will undo Roe. Is that hypocrisy? Yeah. Are we going to expose them? Yeah. All the Republican senators will vote for judges who will repeal Roe and then say they don't want to. B.S. Here's what some of the judges they voted for. Judge Leonard Grass, he said Roe v. Wade is morally bankrupt. Judge Amy Cohn Barrett, she said Roe was erroneously decided. The one they voted for last week, just about all of them, or every Republican, she said Planned Parenthood kills 150,000 women, and contraceptives cause cancer. And now they're going to move Stephen Clark, who's affiliated with a group that compared Roe to Dred Scott. They think he should be a federal judge. Do we? No! Do we think the federal society, which is dedicated to repealing Roe, should pick judges? No! This is their game plan. Their game plan is to load up the bench. That's why we're here at the Supreme Court. With people who want to undo Roe, repeal Roe, greatly curtail Roe. That's their game plan, but we are here to expose them. We are here to show America that America is pro-choice. Stand for Republican senators who work to undermine Roe. I'm with you all the way. On to victory, everybody.
reproductive health care is health care. That abortion care is health care. Say, stop the bans. Stop the bans. I'm Lena Wynn, and I am the president of the Planned Parenthood Action Plan. I am a doctor, and my job is to take care of women in this country. And on behalf of the one in five women in America who have come to Planned Parenthood for care, I stand with our patients to denounce these unprecedented, unethical, and dangerous attacks on women's health and rights. And I thank our champions in Congress for standing with us ready to fight here on the steps of the court, in the House, and in the Senate. Look, these extreme bans are no coincidence. First Trump and Pence filled the courts with judges willing to give politicians power and control over women's bodies. And we are looking at you, Brad Kavanaugh. And second, they started a misinformation campaign manufacturing crises to cover up for what? they are really doing, which is third, they passed extreme bans in order to overturn Roe. Are we going to stand for that? No! Because for their dystopian plan to work, there is one more step. They need us to be silent. No! Does anyone here think that women in this country will stay silent while our rights are being taken away from us? Because this is the 